This is absolutely amazing, this golf swing. The speed, guys, the best drive of the golf ball in the world. And we're going to get in there, and I'm going to show you from different angles what this guy's doing. And we're going to improve our driving. We're going to steal a few. Whoa. I watched this guy hit golf balls in Australian Open a couple of years when I was teaching there, and uh, it absolutely blew my mind. It was uh, staggering, the, uh, the ball speed. And uh, I couldn't believe it. it was the first time I'd really seen a ball move that fast consistently through the air. And uh, yeah, he ended up winning the tournament. But let's get in there and have a look at the moves of McElroy, right? And the reason we're going to be looking at this at different angles, I'm going to show you some hand movements, wrist movements, from different views, not just the standard ones. So just hang in there because from these, when I play these uh, videos back and forth, you'll get a bit of a, an understanding or a feel. And when you mimic the positions, right, you can get in there and mimic and do some practice swings, you can improve your driving. I've been studying this guy for months now, and it's actually really helped a lot of the people I'm teaching and also my own driving. Okay, because you can get in there and have a look and see things that you wouldn't normally feel. Now his general motion, obviously he hits great lines and planes, he's strong, he's fast, he's young, but uh, we're all out there trying to improve our golf and do our best, right? Now we can get in there and have a look at all the, the standard wrist alignments and things that he does, but I'm just going to be looking at the major moves here. Now obviously we know that there's head movement down, it's not something that's easy to do, um, it's a little bit disruptive, but the tour average is two to four inches down. He has what I call a bend and snap release, so that the legs will bend and then and then snap back up. And now either really you have that or you don't. Okay, so there's different styles of transition where you're looking at more of a slide and hold or a bump and turn, whichever depending on what suits your own swing. Right now, what we'll what we'll do is we'll get in there and have a look here at the club here as it comes down well underneath plane, and that would be probably looked at as a mistake by a lot of the coaches out there. But you really want to, you know, if you're coming, you're better off coming underneath the plane with the driver than than coming in really really steep somewhere over here, which most of the people are doing. But there's ways you can get out of it. Now it's just interesting looking here at the club face control because this is what you can see in your phones. So every professional that I've ever seen, perhaps apart from Bubba, Bubba Watson, is filming their swings with the mobile phones, but the public aren't. So, you know, on world-class golf instruction, I've got to tell you, but what we do is we show you how to use an app and set up your phones so that you can, you know, get in there and understand it a bit, but also when you're playing well, you can film it and save it because we don't play very well for longer than a couple of weeks and then something happens. And it's always the tendencies taking over, so it's very, very interesting. Now, looking at that face position, I've filmed about 30,000 swings around the world with the high-speed cameras. Then most of the club golfers have the face pointing over here, and from there they have all sorts of different issues. Uh, slicing and losing ball speed and all sorts of things. But it's not just that, it's really, even for advanced players here, we're seeing issues of a lot of people not really compressing shots nicely and stuff, so the club face will have a big, plays a big part of that. Now let's have a look at how he releases the club here, and I'll show you then from another angle. So you can just see here, all right, so you can mimic that. So if you got in front of a mirror or you had your club head and you looked at that, and you sort of just swung it back and through, your, your hands and wrists then start to move effectively, because obviously there's some things that he does that we can't do. World Class Golf Instruction has over 700 detailed videos for every golfer. Practice programs and evidence-based material is applied in helping you to become your own coach and play your best golf. Join us in the chat room and join the community of World Class Golf Instruction. I'll just show you that from another angle. It does get interesting. Now I did a few videos recently and, and a lot of people really, really liked them. A couple of people misunderstood them because they think that it plays, you know, it's part of uh, helping them to flip um, the club head, but it's not. So let's have a look here at this. One of the things where when I measure wrist angles, a lot of club golf is really struggling not getting enough angle in here. Now if you get that right wrist setting back on itself effectively, you can really get a steeper shoulder turn and uh, you know, it squares up your face, picks up your speed. Now there's a couple of creases there on the skin above the watch, something that you can get a feel for, right? I'll just practice. And when you see this club move in, you can see also there that that really good angle. When you see this club come in, he really does hold his angle in deep. Now I'll get in here and I'll pop a line in so you can sort of see, and I'll zoom in on it. So have a look at this. So there's a big angle in here, all right? So you can mimic that. Now you've got to be able to match that up on the other side. Now with the iron shots, the guys have 12 degrees of shaft length, all right? With the driver, they're not really having that much. It's only zero to three degrees because the ball's so far forwards. But when you see it, on this side, this is the area that I'm talking about. So you've got to be able to match up the lag. So if you bring that lag in, you've got to be able to balance it up or match it up on the other sides. And so you can see that lead wrist is in extension or, or cupped, and the right wrist is here. And that's how you balance it up. That's how you get the snap, the speed at the bottom. 
But most club golfers can't get that right. You know, they think that if you flip it, they're flipping it then, but they're flipping it earlier. They've already flipped it well before. It's the ability to bring in, it's a throwing motion. Do you know what I mean? It, it, like you're bringing it in really, really deep, and then you're sort of snapping it on the other side, but you've got to mimic that and feel it. And it's, you know, keeping the grip nice and loose for you guys. You can get those hands together. I'll show you an angle from, so, I mean, it's the actual, it's the actual cupping here, the extension that will bring the rotation. It's not completely rolling it over which is deceptive when we sort of look at swings from this angle. You know, we just zoom in a bit here and you can sort of see, it's obviously there's a big angle held, right? That's, hard, that's, that's a lot of speed and power, all the long drive champions talk about it, you know, the lags and area that we increase the speed, the length of swing, but you can sort of see that rotation. Now, if you're getting your forearms, you guys are bringing the end of the butt of the grip end in deep, you know, leading it in and then letting the hands work in this fashion and the left wrist on the other side will be cupped, you're going to pick up your speed, but you're going to get that snap. Now, obviously, one of the greatest things about driving the ball is it's a reasonably centered head and then getting the chest up, and that's when you get that Olympic style finish position. But this swing really is uh, phenomenal. When we get in there and uh, simply have a look and let this thing play through, like this is just remarkable, the moves. Heel lifts up, plants back down. I mean, it just smashes at 320 yards. He must be just laughing his head off sometimes when he's hitting balls, wouldn't he? Just ripping it down the middle. You can just see the, the unique move. See the heel lifts up, so he goes into the toe. See the lead heel? Let's bring that across a little bit. All right, so the knees bend. I mean, if you could thinking stuff like that in the swing, it's got to be hard. <laughs> but it's just interesting looking at it. And see how the club almost touches the grass here. And then it just, it's just poetry in motion there, isn't it? Oh, and it's absolutely flogged. So when we're looking here, we'll get into a, this last picture here. I'll just take you quickly through this one here, because this is a little bit of technique. I so say you can be technical without me being mechanical. I mean, keeping it simple doesn't mean it's effective. You can show you close to nothing sometimes. And uh, so when we get in there and have a look at a few things that he does here, it is just... Uh, he likes to keep it wide. The best drivers of golf ball uh, kept it wide. And he's spoken about a wider type of swing and loading up in the right. And recently in a video, he said he feels pressure into this right foot. And when he gets to the top, the first move he likes to feel is that he moves laterally. Now there's four to six inches of to the two average of, of lateral movement forwards. And on World Class Golf Instruction, I've got a whole series there on lateral movement and things to practice. And you just slowly chip away at your game. And really, this keeping this head reasonably centered. I've got a feel for you, right? You can check this out. You keep your head reasonably centered. Now, obviously, he has that type of setup here where he's got it all. He got a bit inverted. He's a bit unique, and uh, something I'm experimenting around with a few of the pros that I'm teaching. Getting this left leg to point back towards the head, and uh, it's a bit different to many of the other players out there. And some of the guys are really liking it if you can get across and get your lateral movement. But I'll give you a bit of a feel here. Head stays centered. All right, we're going to keep it simple. It moves it just a bit there, but it moves back forwards a little bit. And then I'm, I'm going with you guys that if you can, depending on your flexibility, I want you to arch your back and get the chest up. So a centered head, and if you can keep your chest pointed up, it's a sensational feel with the driver. You know, some of us out there, we're, all we're doing is trying to play our best golf. Obviously, if you can't move your body like he can, uh, but you can get improve it. Improve if you're on a handicap of eight, or you're a handicap of six, or you're aspiring to a professional. Some of these moves are really, really interesting. So we'll just check him out here. You can see the the width on on this one, and uh, we'll get him moving through the ball. I love that look through the ball, isn't it? The head moving in the chest, and look at that lead foot just braced and whoops, sorry, that lead foot just fully braced and on the on the ground here, and just really. Uh, the best driver of the ball in the world. Guys, there's Rory McIlroy. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check out World Class Golf Instruction. There's a, a chat room and a community on there, and uh, people are really loving it. There's 700 videos in there, so there's lots of different areas. And if you're interested in online lessons, a lot of people are taking online lessons from me, check out craighandsandgolf.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.